What's up guys, gals, non-binary pals? It's Allison, aka the Feel Happy Analyst, and welcome to this video. Uh, this video is going to kind of be like an intro slash q and A. I I have some questions that I got from my Instagram, and then also just kind of wanted to share like my story. I'm trying to get more comfortable slash familiar with doing long form videos. Um, and then also like videos for TikTok. Um, because I'm not super comfortable being in front of a camera. Also, I talk really fast, which tends to be an issue. So it's kind of what I'm working on right now is just getting comfortable in front of cameras. The first couple of questions all play into each other. They're all questions about me. So I guess I'll just do like my little, um, you know, job interview, just uh, explain or tell, tell us about yourself. Yeah, that. So my name's Allison. I'm from Central Jersey. Yes, it does exist. If you're from this area, and you know that's a big debate. I live about 20 minutes from Rutgers, unless you played in the GMC conference in um, New Jersey for high school. You won't know where I live because no one's ever heard of it, but it's about 20 minutes from Rutgers. It's the same turnpike exit. So 20 minutes south of Rutgers, 30 minutes north of Monmouth, give or take. That's how I best describe it. Um, but yeah, so I'm 21. Um, I graduated from Sacred Heart University in May of 2023. So I just graduated like eight months ago, nine months ago, just about. Yeah, it'll be like nine months maybe next week. Um, but yeah, so I graduated in May with a degree in exercise and science and a minor in the honors college. Um, but my degree is in exercise science, which basically prepares you to be either a physical therapist or a strength coach. I didn't really like the physical therapy route. Three years of co three more years of college to get a doctorate didn't sound great to me. And strength coach, I'm a really good deadlifter, but to do a snatch, I'm deathly afraid of dropping bars on my head. So it just didn't work out there. But I guess a little bit more into my field hockey background. So I first picked up a stick in eighth grade. Um, we played floor hockey in my middle school gym class. Um, and I really loved it. Before that, I was a competitive cheerleader for eight years. And I kind of got to the end of, uh, end of middle school and I was like, my knee really hurts from cheerleading because um, if you know anything about cheerleading, you throw yourself backwards a lot and I couldn't land on my feet. So I was landing on my knees for like three years consistently um, and doesn't really help your knees. So I went to my school's sports fair. We had a, like the eighth graders all had a sports fair for high school and the cheerleading table was here. The field hockey table was here. I knew the head coach of the cheerleading team because she was my seventh grade uh, science teacher. So I was going to cheerleading. And when I got to the table, it was the assistant coach, not the head coach. And something about me is I'm a little shy. I have a lot of anxiety. So I didn't really want to go talk to this coach who I didn't know. And she was also like talking like, oh, you need this skill and this skill. And they're all skills that like I either had but had lost because I was injured or I didn't have. And I was kind of like, mm. and the girls who were over at the table were people who I didn't like. And I was like, mm. so I was standing like the tables here. I was standing like over here. Well, the field hockey table was right here and no one was going to the field hockey table. So um, there's one of the senior, uh, she was the senior captain, Janelle. She played at Montclair um came up and she was like do you want to play field hockey and I was like no but I'm, I'm like I, I, I'm, I'm just gonna listen I'm just gonna let her talk so I'm letting her talk whatever and the coach is there she seemed nice enough and I'm kind of like half paying attention half listening to cheerleading because that's what I wanted to do well they asked me for my email address and I'm like okay I'll, I'll give them my email address I'm not playing a game like I'm just gonna ignore all their emails so I write down my email address whatever well, a month later, two months later, we get an email about the first practice. My mom's like, oh, you should go, you should go, you should go. I'm not feeling it. Well, turns around, I'll turn around and find out my next door neighbor is the varsity goalie for the field hockey team. So her mom talks to my mom. And guess what? I'm going to practice at 7 a.m. the next morning. Um, our first practice was running two miles. I think my time was maybe 26 minutes. It was terrible. Um, I hated it. I cried every single day that I didn't want to go. Um, I had just gotten contacts and I literally would spend 40 minutes trying, pretending to put in my contacts so I didn't have to go to practice. I hated it, wanted to quit. Um, week before our first 
game. I go, I'm playing in a scrimmage with our JV team. There's this girl, great player. She's like six foot. Pumbles me. I get knocked backwards. I'm out for a week. Then I get diagnosed I got diagnosed with a head trauma. It was a concussion. Um, but yeah, out for like an entire week. Played fall season, great. Uh our freshman tournament's coming up. Our varsity, one of our varsity starters, uh, took a corner into my hand, broke three of my fingers. They're still crooked. Um, was out for the end of the season. So great, great start to freshman year. So about February comes. I'm not planning on going back. I hated it. Well, one of the freshman coach is our gym teacher. She comes up to me and she goes, hey, I heard you're quitting. I heard you're not coming back next year. You're coming back next year, right? And I go, yeah, I wasn't coming back next year, but I guess I had told one of my friends and they told the coach. So I guess we wound up coming back next year. Um, and then about May, I, May, June, I was having problems with my knee because I tripped and fell playing basketball in gym class, as one does. And I wound up tearing my meniscus and um, needing surgery on my knee. So I was out for my entire sophomore season. Well, at the end of my sophomore season, or at the end of my surgery, surgery did not work. Um, now, there's a lot of nuanced complications to that. Basically, my kneecap naturally dislocates. Like, you could tap it and it pops out of place. Um, so, going into junior year, my doctor not clearing me. N no chance. I'm getting cleared. So, I'm like, hey, I was a manager last year. I'll be manager this year, whatever. Then, my going into my senior year, still was not cleared to physically, like, to play physical games um I did however convince my doctor to clear me so I could play five seconds on my senior night I started and then slipped right out um which was great so when I tell you I've played in five seconds of a varsity game my entire life and then like maybe 15 freshman games like no did not play um and then I went to Sacred Heart where I was also the manager for two seasons um, because I left my senior year, or, yeah, so about two seasons, and then I started the field hockey analyst in January, or February, the end of February of my senior year of college, and been doing this ever since, um, which is crazy to think about, because I started the field hockey analyst basically as a way to prove to, uh, hiring committees, because I wanted to coach, um, prove to hiring committees that, like, I knew what I was talking about, um, and it kind of just blew up into something a lot bigger and I've gotten a lot of opportunities because of it and I wouldn't change it for the world. I love it. Okay, so the next questions are what's your favorite stat, favorite team, and favorite players? My favorite stat would probably be turnover charts. I don't post them a lot on my Instagram um, just because they're, they're just hard to, I don't want to say they're hard to post. They're hard to explain if you don't know what you're looking at. And then also, like, I'm only doing a turnover chart for, like, one game at a time. Maybe, like, usually it's separated into quarter quarters. So it's hard to post on Instagram. But you will see a lot of those over on Twitter because I do more pro, pro league and professional stuff on Twitter. Um, and then you'll see them in game reports on Patreon. Um, my favorite field. My favorite field I've ever been to is Lock Haven which is probably a controversial take, um, just because it's in the middle of nowhere. I actually toured to, um, I toured and I think I applied to, uh, to Lock Haven, but I didn't wind up going there. Um, but there are fields, like, sculpted, like, into the mountains. So, like, literally behind the, uh, the benches is mountains. It's just, it's just so pretty. It did downpour the entire time we were there, but I just really love that field. Um, and then my favorite national team player changes on a daily basis. Um, I mean, obviously, Sessa, like, if you've seen any of my posts, you know that, like, we're really big Sessa fans. Um, she's just, like, a sweetheart. Um, right now, I've been obsessed with how um, Hoffman's been playing in the qualifiers, although she just got injured. Um, I think she's been doing really phenomenal. Um, love Maddie Zimmer. Obviously, a massive Kelsey Big fan. It really just depends on the day. Um, I mean, we played, who did we play yesterday? China. I mean, we didn't have a great game, but Sessa had a great game yesterday. So, like, yesterday I would have said Sessa. Today, I don't know. It's too early to determine, and we don't have a game today. And then all the rest of the questions are kind of more recruiting-based, I guess. So, first one is, what do you look for in players? And this one was asked by a high schooler, so I know this is, like, more recruiting-based. 
and honestly this is gonna sound probably probably gonna sound bad but I care so much about your sportsmanship and your off-field performance and that sounds like it sounds bad because obviously like I'm a stats page I post how many goals you have and like stuff like that but when I'm like looking at players um like to be recruited or if I'm looking at players in general how you are on the bench matters so much more to me than how you are on the field you can be an amazing player I'm gonna I'll t tell a story of a player um I'm sorry to this player she no longer plays but there was this player when I played in high school who was on an opposing team phenomenal player committed to d1 i think she was on a full ride to a division one school like phenomenal player she had the worst attitude off the field like just not a nice person um and she wound up in a game i played or my team played against her getting red carded cursing out her coach cursing out the bench cursing out her ref and then leaving the field and revoked got her entire like scholarship revoked because she cursed out a ref a coach and the bench and also the recruiters at that game for another player so not a great look for her that to me like that her, her character was so much important more important than who she was like how she played on the field I like obviously I am on the, I was on the bench for almost every single one of my games so I'm very much the kid who's screaming the entire game cheering for all of their players so that's something I really look for in how you respect your coach how you act towards your teammates are you cheering for your teammates when you're on the bench? Are you asking questions or are you defending that, oh, I didn't make a mistake? A player, a great player, is someone who's always willing to, one, admit that they did something wrong, and then two, who wants to learn. An eagerness to learn is such an important quality, especially in high school going to college, because depending on where you go to college, D1, D2, D3, the playing style the playing level the playing experience is going to be such a vastly different experience than high school that you need to be eager and willing to learn because you're not going to be playing if you played for you know a random high school in new jersey you are not going to be playing the same type of field hockey you played in high school it's just not how it works so that's kind of what i look for in a player is someone who has an all-around character that's good because at the end of the day we're raising student athletes and after your four maybe five years in college depending on your COVID eligibility there's 24 kids on the national team you're not going to be playing field hockey for the rest of your life that's just the reality of it so I want like I I want as someone who works in you know college field hockey to make sure that we're raising good humans good employable humans who can work outside of the scope of field hockey and aren't just you know good goal scorers that was a very long-winded answer next question is what changes do you want made in the ncaa which i probably can go on a 40 40 year tangent on this um but honestly just for them to do better and i'm probably gonna get in trouble for this but i don't really care i just want them to do better Field hockey is one of the only sports that does not have official social media. The official field hockey account has not been used since 2018. Um, they don't cover field hockey whatsoever. Honestly, the selection show is usually not great. Um, the championship is not always great, like greatly run, greatly televised. Some of our commentators, and no hate to the commentators, but I mean, there was a game and it was an NCAA game. The commentator didn't know what he was talking about. It was just poorly run. What's it called? The stats on the website. I've had countless players tell me, oh, like, yeah, my stats on the website are wrong. Or, oh, like, I'm in the wrong categories. I'm in the wrong grade. They have me marked as my old team. I transferred. Just there's no accountability for how wrong they are putting in. Like, they are putting public information out there. And it's constantly and almost consistently wrong at this point. Um, so in, as a whole, I want the NCAA to like act like they actually care about field hockey because it nine times out of 10, they don't, um, or at least they don't act like it. And it gets really frustrating, um, especially as a sport that has been growing that, you know, we're getting a couple of new teams. We got, uh, the, the, Yules, the Yulesville, the Youngsville, I don't know how to say their name. We got, um, Penn State, Harrisburg, and then Roberts Wesleyan just joined Wingate's a new program. We have newer programs joining and, you know, growing the sport, but then we get Lindenwood get cutting their entire program on a whim for no reason. Um, e I mean, even teams, I'm going to use William Patterson. William Patterson didn't have a season last year 
for whatever reason. I'm assuming it probably has to do with roster size. But they just didn't have a season last year. And that's not something that should be happening at all. Um, I mean, I know it's a problem in other sports. My friend's lacrosse season just got canceled. Um, but it's just, it's one of those things where it's like, there has to be a better solution to this. Olympic sport athletes are still athletes. So maybe we should care about them. And then last question is, what's my favorite part about running the field hockey analyst? Honestly, it's just like connecting with all the kids. Um, and now I use kids to refer to literally anyone. It's just an umbrella term to me. I know people get offended or annoyed when I call like a 23 year old a kid because I'm younger than them. It's just an umbrella term, I promise. Um, but just connecting with all the kids. I mean, I've gotten, I get messages from countless players um like thanking me or even just like sending me their highlight tapes and like I love I love seeing like the U10 and U12 highlight tapes they're just the cutest little things ever but like getting their highlight tapes or like um I've had a couple of kids message me after they won an award and be like I just won this award can you post about it that just like it brings me so much joy because it's so, like yeah I didn't really like play in high school or college my dog is crying I'm so sorry but as someone who didn't have um somewhere that showcased players when I was in sports it brings me jo it brings me joy that like you guys like this makes you feel good and that you like this um because I mean I remember being a cheerleader I was like eight years old and I won an award at a competition for the most outstanding cheerleader which probably was bs but I won that like at eight years old. When I tell you, I had that medal hanging up in my room probably until I was like 14 because it just meant so much to me that someone took their time to recognize that I was doing something good and that I was doing something right, especially in a world where sports are pay to play, which is a whole nother rant. Um, but in a world where sports are pay to play and only top players whose parents can take time off work to bring them to Florida every weekend, get recognized. It's just it's so important to me that players, that all players can be recognized this, regardless of their financial status and regardless of if they play for UNC or if they play for, I don't want to hit on any D3 teams. Um, I'm going to say Robert Wesleyan just because they just started this year. Um, no hate to them, I promise. Players on UNC and Northwestern should not be the only players in the NCAA that get recognized every year. Like, Every player works just as hard as those players, and that's my opinion. Um, but yeah, so that's it for this video. I'm gonna probably have to edit this down. It's like 23 minutes, and I ranted half of it. But yeah, so uh, I hope to have more video content soon, and hopefully more TikToks. You know, you guys enjoyed this. Comment down below and let me know like what other videos you would want to see. And obviously, if you're not following me over on Instagram, what are you doing here? Like seriously, how did you get here? But go follow me on Instagram. Um. My Twitter will also be linked down below if you like Pro League stuff. Um, it's not called Twitter anymore, but eh, it's Twitter. And I guess I'll probably put my TikTok down below too. Um, but yeah, so that's it. Have a good day.